Okay, hi guys, welcome back to the Audio Levels channel, welcome back to another review, and today we have the Hi-Fi Man Deva Pro. Uh, this is one of the most exciting headphones I've seen in a long time, for a lot of reasons, mainly on the sound, but also because of this R2R Bluetooth dongle thing that they've implemented. This is some innovation here, and it is very well implemented. Now, the box is a little bit big to get under the camera, so this is what it looks like on the inside. You get your user manuals as usual, and on the inside you have the satin material, you have the cable for charging the R2R Bluetooth unit, and you have a really, really, really awful cable um, for listening to your music on, so I replaced that with an aftermarket cable. Uh, but I've been doing the predominant listening of this with the R2R. Um, I've used maybe 10 hours on cable and maybe 20 hours on um, the Bluetooth dongle. So let's get the box out of the way and I'll move myself into a more normal seating position, bringing you guys down so we can have a look at the headphones. Now the headphones are very similar to a lot of other Hi-Fi Man headphones. They, they look the same across the range now, especially at the cheaper prices, but it feels like a, a really decent build, build quality. I believe these, these retail for about $330, $350. And it's definitely worth its money when you take into account the sound. The build quality, you're going to get better, better built earphones for $320, $350 in that price point. Um, I think there are compromises that are made. It's a very boring looking design, um, but honestly, once you get to listen to them, you do not care about that. And once they're on the head, they're very comfortable and uh, you, you sort of forget about the, the, maybe like the plastic on the headband here. So there's metal on the yokes and there is a click system in place. If you look on the inside there where you can fine tune your adjustment for your size. The headband is on the thick side, but is very nicely padded with a, a very thick memory foam on it. It is a fake leather on the top. The only area that feels specifically cheap is where it says the Deva Pro. This is very plasticky feeling. And it's not too much of a, a rattle, but it's definitely there. But once you put it on your head, it's not really a problem. Um, the, the parlor trick, comes down here when uh, you have this dongle, uh, which is basically a DAC and amplifier unit, a portable DAC and amplifier unit. Um, it is fairly cheap plastic in itself, but again, it's, it's at a price point where they're including this uh, with an earphone, a headphone that sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, basically you have the charging port in here and you have the operation button and um, so you hold it down to pair as you would with uh, many other devices and speakers and stuff and uh, you have it connected into your headphones here and it, it just is such a streamlined system it doesn't add any real weight to the system that you're going to noticeably detect um, and it just gives you that freedom of movement um, you know in the office when I'm working, and yes, this is not my real job. Uh, I have a real job, and uh, this is... Um, when I'm doing that, I'm not really listening to music. I'm not critically listening, and this sounds more than good enough. I mean, the difference is not as great as you would expect between listening to this and the higher-end amplifier, uh, although these earphones are definitely uh, scalable on good equipment. Uh, headphones are scalable on good equipment. The convenience of this, the convenience of being able to just move about the office freely, the range is excellent. I was able to go into the room next door, no connection dropping, uh, just listening to my music, was listening to a Tidal, absolutely no problem. Um, you can have um, APTX HD and LDAC support on this, um, so you're getting high resolution streaming uh, with, with really no downsides to it. It, it makes the, the headphone uh, so much more versatile and it's a better alternative than using a, a wired Bluetooth DAC that goes into your pocket for example. I uh, really 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 recommend this and I, I hope this is something we see a lot more in the future from different companies. Now uh, battery life, I should probably talk about battery life. I got 6 hours and 25 minutes um, on average that was from three or four bat three battery drain tests that I did 
at moderate listening volume. If you increase the volume, it does sort of drop below that six hour mark. I think that's more than adequate for somebody. Uh, what I found myself doing was just plugging in the cable at my computer, um, or I have a, a USB dock next to my computer and I just plug it in uh, when I go home at night and pick it up in the morning and it's good to go because I don't really listen at the office for more than six hours. I would say I listen maybe four hours on average in a day. Uh, and you know, if it does die off, you always have the option to go to the, the wired solution. Um, now, let's get into the specifics of the sound. Overall, the sound is clean, open and airy. Very, very airy. The sound stage is huge on this um, for the money. For a sub $500 headphone, this is up there in terms of sound stage. They really, really, really do a good, uh, good job of presenting that open, airy, planar magnetic, beautiful sound. Um, the bass is on the light side. Uh, it, it fits in with the overall balanced tuning of the, the headphone itself. So you've not got that prominence. Some planar magnetic headphones that are a little bit more closed off have a lot of punch to them. Um, but this one doesn't. This one uh, is got very detailed and textured bass, but it is not... Um, it, it, it's not got that ethereal deep rumble that you're going to get. Um, so if it's if it's something that you're wanting um, to listen to a lot of EDM, um, rap, hip hop, uh, R&B, that sort of stuff, it's not going to be the headphone for you. But if, uh, if you like a lot of detail, texture and um, speed in your bass, um, that this is a, an excellent headphone for that. Uh, that bass is also tight, super, super controlled. There's no flabbiness to it at all, whether in the sub bass or the mid bass region, there's no reverberance that sounds uh, flabby, so to speak. Um, let's see what else we got. We got the mids, the mids are natural smooth and uh, very detailed as you would expect. These use something called stealth magnets. I don't know what that does, um, but I would say that these are above average detail. Uh, they are, um, exactly what I would expect from a planar magnetic driver and the fact that something can sound like this now under $500 when we would be looking in the sort of five to a thousand dollar range just a few years ago I think that's testament to um, how well Hi-Fi Man have, uh, have sort of cornered that planar magnetic market they know what they're doing with planar magnetic drivers and th their tech is starting to trickle down into the lower end stuff and this is going to be a gateway uh, drug headphone this is going to be a headphone that introduces people to that really good planar sound and uh, maybe they start looking higher up the line within Hi-Fi Man's uh, own product range which is, is going to be a good move for them uh, like going forward, you're creating a customer that likes the way you produce your headphones and they know you're going to get, get a significant step up when you go up. But um, I wouldn't say this is entry level by any means, but this is in that region of like something like a Sennheiser uh, HD 660. Uh, and to be honest, I think I prefer these a lot more. Now, uh, treble is a little forward and a little bright. If there was only one uh, area that I would maybe criticize is that Despite its overall neutral-ish presentation, um, the treble is pushed a little bit further than the mid-range. It is not quite sibilant, but it's, it's, in some tracks it displays it slightly hot. Um, um, maybe not hot is the right word, but forward and prominent and more noticeable uh, would be a better way. Um, but Conversely, that, that also creates uh, the illusion of soundstage. These have a big soundstage anyway, but then that treble air and sparkle creates even more airy openness. So um, it, it's sort of a trade-off in uh, benefits and negatives there. Um, as for the, the soundstage and separation, I've gone over soundstage. Soundstage is one of the, the, the main strong points and the main reasons that I would be advising people to buy this, especially if you listen to a lot of uh, orchestral music, uh, if you listen to a lot of classical music, you listen to, say, Inaudi, um, if you listen to jazz music, like live jazz recordings, live concerts and stuff like that, this, this can display a good open out of the head experience. Um, is there anything else I need to talk about on this? The, the ear pads were super, super comfortable, way more premium than, than I think I, I'd expected. My ears fit nicely in there. Um, they have this perforated, um, almost sweat resistant material. 
uh, or um, sweat wicking material, I would say, with the fake leather on the outside. So you get the, the durability on the outside, but you get the softness um, and the lack of heat buildup uh, by using this uh, wicking material. Uh, it's a fairly light headphone as well, even with the, the Bluetooth DAC on it. Um, and yeah, I think for the money, you're talking 300 and, uh, under $350. It might not be the fanciest looking, but God damn, it sounds good. It sounds really, really, really good. And when you've got the versatility of that R2R dongle on the bottom of it, uh, I think that that's a smashing buy. So if you're somebody like me that sits a lot in the office, but is maybe not just stationary at one desk, you move around a lot, you talk to people, you don't want to have to worry about unplugging, plugging your uh, headphones. Uh, the other one I could see um, is if you move about home, you're cooking, doing something, and you're listening to music, uh, that would be absolutely perfect. Obviously, it's not going to be something for like a student in a library because they are open back design. Um, but sound quality up there, uh, value for money. Build quality is, is okay, not great. Looks pretty bad. Um, but overall, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely recommend this just based purely on the sound and the functionality of this dongle. So that's it for another review guys thank you very much for watching if you're new here please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and i will see you all on the next video